It's one of my absolute favorite movies, and I think it's Tim Burton's masterpiece, at least so far. He's not dead yet, but it could be his masterpiece forever. It's Ed Wood. What's this movie about? Why do I like it so much? Let me just give you an overview, an explanation, and a bit of an analysis coming up next. <laughs> Ed Wood stars Johnny Depp as the director, Edward Wood Jr., who has been named the worst director ever. So why would they make a movie and try to make a good movie about the worst ever? That's one of the delightful pleasures of this movie, and also all of the performances in it, running from Bill Murray as Bunny Breckenridge, George Steele as the wrestler Tor Johnson, Vampira, the actress who plays her. There's a cameo appearance that I won't spoil in here, but it's really good. I mean, there's so many great performances, but the ultimate one, and if nothing else makes this movie great, this is it. Martin Landau's performance playing Bella Lugosi in his 70s. Wait. Pull the string. Pull the string. I rewatch this movie every three years, which is as often as I rewatch a movie. And this movie always delights me. First of all, the friendship between Landau's character and Depp's character, Wood and Lugosi, become unusual friends. And then Landau just absolutely nails this part, playing the washed up actor, the once famous, the once great Bella Lugosi, now a shell of himself, a drug addict, very sad, but also able to ham it up and put on a performance and seeming to enjoy whenever someone gives him attention. One of the classic things that Tim Burton loves to do is to bring together odd, very strange, unusual friendships and show how they form. You not only get Ed Wood, the director, and Bela Lugosi, the actor's friendship, which I assume was a real life thing, but also this weird cast of people sort of coming together and making stuff, even if it's terrible schlock. It's still great stuff to see all these friendships and very strange and weird people Burton loves to do that. You know, he did that very well in Big Fish, for example. I think Edward Scissorhands does that in, in a bunch of his other movies. So this is one of his favorite things to do. One of his favorite themes is weird friendships and how they form. Now, this is a movie to me about making movies. There's been a number of these in Hollywood, and, and for good reasons. I mean, obviously, people making movies know what it's like to make movies, so they really usually do well at movies about movies. This is one of the best, I think, ever, showing you... One, how a bad movie is made. How a person who has an artistic vision gets to sort of enact that in spite of all the hurdles, including financial hurdles. And that was one of Ed Wood's problems. And then the wonder of the fact that Ed Wood made so many movies. How in the world did that happen? Even <laughs> given that he's so bad at making movies. There are so many great jokes about making movies in this and they just keep coming over and over and over. Gosh, Bella, how do you do that? You must be double-jointed. And you must be young Aryan. I just love the fact that Edward thinks he's a realist because if he captures a moment on camera where this props move around accidentally or some continuity error, he thinks that's realistic. That's so good. And cut. Perfect. Printed. Let's move on. Don't you want to do another take, Ed? Looks like Big Baldy had a little trouble getting through the door. No, it's fine. It's real. And there's meta jokes in here about Sarah Jessica Parker, the actress who plays Ed Wood's girlfriend, and she calls herself a horse, which is something that Sarah Jessica Parker, she made fun of for supposedly looking like a horse, and here she is, her character is saying that in this movie. Do I really have a face like a horse? For all those reasons, and this just to me is a very funny movie. Now, the strikingly interesting thing about it is that in 1994, when this movie came out, Ed Wood, you know, likes to be a cross-dresser. He likes to put on women's clothing. This is a, th a story element that comes up all over the movie. And then you even have sex change ideas in the movie. Bunny Breckenridge, played by Bill Murray, may, in fact, change his sex. There's jokes about that. It was considered, as far as I can remember it, extremely weird, extremely on the, on the edge of things in the United States when this movie came out and through the past couple decades. But, you know, in circa 2020, 2021, the transgender issue has come up all over the place. 
And I think that what makes this movie watch quite a bit differently, and I'd be interested in your take on it, given that it's supposed to be extraordinarily strange, the things that go on in this movie, wearing women's clothes, for example, but now that's at the forefront of United States cultural discourse. One question coming up in this movie is what makes for a bad movie and what's a good movie and what's a great movie? What do these labels and adjectives mean? And while the movie is very clear that Edward was terrible as an artist, as a movie maker, he is a person worthy to be honored? Well, that's what the movie is saying. Why? Part of it is his gusto and his ability to overlook reality and his ability to try to gain finances for himself. So much of this movie is, is a wonder to me. Assuming that it's factually correct, it is amazing how Ed Wood got these movies made. I mean, the kinds of people who would give him money to fund a movie are fascinating. How Ed Wood found his actors also extremely fascinating to me. Did they really steal a fake octopus from a Hollywood studio? And did they really not have a motor to use so that Bella Lugosi has to go down in there and move the tentacles around? And to me, this movie actually gives me, even though it's hilarious, it gives me an idea of what it's like to struggle very hard to make art, to make movies. Now there's a very interesting comparison made in this movie between the worst director ever, Ed Wood, and by the way, I don't think he's the worst ever. His movies are bad, no doubt about it. But there are some really, really terrible movies. And they have a similar quality as great movies in that they seem impossible. to. There's no way you could try to make them. If you try to make a bad movie, you couldn't come up with the worst movie ever because it's so over-the-top, amazingly bad. Ed Wood's movies may be there. And then the movie makes that comparison between him as the worst director ever and Orson Welles as supposedly the best director ever, and they have so much in common, so says this movie. Orson Welles comes up in this movie at least six times by my count, five times mentioned several times, his poster of Citizen Kane is there, Ed Wood seems to love Orson Welles, and then, not much of a spoiler alert, Ed Wood does meet Orson Welles in this movie, who, <laughs> great joke, becomes the inspiration for the making of Plan 9 from Outer Space, supposedly the worst movie ever. I think this meeting is not true. It didn't actually happen, but it's a great device made by the movie maker here, Tim Burton, who realizes that the artistic genius Orson Welles struggled to make movies, struggled to get finances for his movies, just like Ed Wood, and that is the plight of the great artist or even the bad artist, or anybody who wants to try, this movie is about them. I love the black and white as an homage to classic horror movies, classic TV horror. It's a cheesy movie all the way through. Thank you, Howard Shore, for your great score here. It has a sort of tones of a cheesy movie. It's made cheekily, and so much of the dialogue is goofy even though this is trying to be as well a serious movie sometimes in a melodrama. And that's what I love about the movie is that the tone that I think Tim Burton was going for nailed. And even if he didn't intend this tone, it is a really good one to sort of capture the insanity of Wood, his awfulness, and yet that sort of honoring of a guy who tried his best to get movies made and there's so many people who are failed artists because they didn't try. And I, God bless Ed Wood for at least trying, even though he was pretty terrible <laughs> at making movies. Now, what do you think about Ed Wood as a movie? What do you think about it in terms of Tim Burton's career? I'd love to know what you guys think. And on this channel, we haven't discussed Tim Burton very much so far. This is 2021. So I'd love to know what my viewers think of him. I have a lot of opinions on Tim Burton, but I just wanted to let you know this is my favorite movie from him, no doubt about it. So let us know all that stuff in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.